Yo, what's going on Kicks Army? Today I'll be showing you guys how to draw the Air Jordan 9 step by step. And then after the drawing itself is done, I'll be giving you guys some art and drawing tips as well. Now guys, don't forget that every Sunday there's always a new how to draw video and early on in the day I post a poll on my channel so that way you guys can vote to see what sneaker you like to see for that day's video. Speaking of videos, if you guys enjoy these how to draw videos or just any of the videos on my channel in general, make sure you hit the like button and if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and bounce past the bell to get post notifications. More importantly, if you like the stencils that you see on the screen or any of the stencils that you see in any one of my videos, you can access all of them for free on my website, kickstart.com. That is your number one resource for free sneaker stencils and the best part is that if you want to see a stencil added to the website that's not already available, you can send a request to the contact tab at the top of the page. Now with that being said, let's get it! Before we draw the sneaker, we have to set up some guidelines to make sure the sneaker is going to look proportionally correct. To start off, we're going to draw two squares right next to each other. And afterward, we're going to divide those two squares in top and bottom halves. Next, we're going to add two vertical lines, one on that bottom right hand quadrant and the second one on the initial left box. Afterward, we're going to add one more horizontal line dividing the two bottom quadrants into halves and this will give us all the guidelines we need to draw out the rest of the sneaker. Now you guys already know that I like to start off by drawing the outside details so that way it is much easier to go ahead and add the inside details afterward. And then once I have the silhouette complete, I'm going to start working on the outsole. For the outsole, you really want to use that last horizontal line as your guide. It's going to make it much easier to make sure these lines are correct. And it's a little weird because it has kind of like those finger webbings towards the toe. As long as they're spaced evenly and the size of each one of them is the same, it should look fine. And then after the outsole and the midsole are done, we're going to start working on the upper. We're going to start by adding that section that connects all the way from the top of the sock liner all the way wrapping around towards the toe. Next, we're going to define the tongue as well as the placement for some of the laces. And then once that part is complete, we're going to start adding those pod sections where the perforations will be all along the upper. Once that's complete, we're going to start filling in the laces using the eyelets. And once that part is complete, you are done. The drawing is already done. Everything is there. Obviously, there are some minor details you can add, like perforations and stitching. But I like to leave that part towards the end because I notice that whenever I start to add those details now and I go over it with the solid color afterward, those colors can smudge very easily, especially if you're using black. I will point out though that even though the Micron markers do have a few sizes that can get very thin like the 20 millimeter, it does seem to me that whenever I use Micron markers as opposed to like ultra fine Sharpies, the Micron markers do smudge a lot more than the Sharpies. It could be just because the Sharpie, the ultra fine Sharpie only comes in one size and it's not extremely thin, like it still has a decent amount of thickness. So by default, because the line itself is so thick and maybe because it soaks into the paper a lot easier, it doesn't smudge when you go around it with color. Definitely whenever I use the Micron markers, especially on spots like perforations and stitching, I do notice that if I'm going over it with the color that it will smudge, so I try to avoid that as much as I can. And the unique thing about this drawing is because instead of using the black for perforations and stitching and stuff like that, what I do is I actually use like a dark blue Sharpie, an ultra fine Sharpie to be exact. And it worked out perfectly because if you look at the reference image for this particular sneaker, as well as with a lot of sneakers, the stitching, the perforations are usually the same color as the upper because, well, it's still part of the same upper. If they were to use black stitching on this upper, you would notice that black stitching immediately and vice versa. We do see in a lot of sneakers where like, let's say it's a black upper, they'll add white stitching and it adds nice contrast. Well, the problem is white stitching is kind of a pain in the butt because when it comes to adding white, it's a very, very difficult thing to go about because you need to do basically one of three things. I'm assuming most people, and I mean most people are working on a white sheet of paper. So if that is the case, which I imagine it is, if you want to have some white detailing even if it's like perforations or if it's stitching one thing you can do if you don't have any access to any white markers or whatever it's just to not color in that section or that space now that can be very very difficult if we're talking about fine detail like perforations where it's a small dot trust me i understand that in which case that might not be the best thing to do only time that might be somewhat easy is if the upper you're dealing with is black or if it's another upper in which case you have like a fine marker to work with because let's say you want to have a really really fine detail like a perforation or a stitching or whatever what you do is you make the section around it black so for example if we think about what stitching is it's basically a rectangle right each one of those stitches is a rectangle so you make an outline of that rectangle in the marker and you pretty much leave that trail all the way through and then you would 
would fill in the upper with black because the outlining is black anyway. Thus, you're gonna have all those white rectangles and that's gonna be the stitching and the same thing with perforations. You make a circle, but you don't fill in the circle. You leave the circle in the middle white and that white would be that white perforation. Obviously, the tighter that you make that circle, the tighter the perforation is and the stressful part about that is if you get that circle to be too tight and it fills it in, well, it's filled in. That's where we go into the second thing is, the second thing you can do is you can use gel pens. Now, when we're dealing with markers, gel pens work very well because unfortunately, as far as I know, I haven't really seen like a good white marker to use. Gel pens kind of get the job done, but because of the nature of the gel pen, they are not the most consistent thing to work with. So if you're trying to get a lot of detail, like a single line that goes up and down with the gel pen, it may be very, very inconsistent. But if we're talking about like dots or very short lines, they do get the job done pretty well. You can find gel pens anywhere, like I usually get mine from Office Depot, but you can also find them in Michaels, Walmart, just wherever they would have gel pens. I imagine they have white gel pens. Obviously, if you go to like an arts and crafts store, you can get higher quality ones, but the basic ones you're going to find are like Uniball, that's the name of the brand. And the problem that you notice too with gel pens is that sometimes you kind of have to like activate the marker a bit. So kind of like uh, if you've ever used like a regular ballpoint pen, sometimes when you try to write down a sheet of paper, it's not working. You have to like scribble off to the side just to get it to work. Same concept with the gel pen. So while the gel pen can't work, sometimes it's going to be very inconsistent. That's why I'm saying if you're trying to do like long stroke lines, or if you're trying to fill in a lot of a section, it's just going to be a pain in the butt. Trust me, you've seen in some of my videos where I'm trying to use these gel pens and it starts off working fine but then it smears and it doesn't want to work and it's like come on gel pen just do your job you only have one job do it Besides the Uniball gel pens, the other brand that I use is Pentouch. I found this at my local uh, Blix art supply store. Again, whatever art supply store they have around the area, I would highly suggest you go there just to see what they have. You don't have to go there to buy anything. You can just walk inside there, see the stuff they have, and get an idea for how much these things cost. And ladies and gentlemen, I know sometimes this whole art stuff seems expensive, but I want you guys to hear me out on this. Tell me one hobby, just one hobby, comment in the comment section down below, one hobby that doesn't require some some sort of money that it takes to go ahead and do that hobby so let's just go away from art let's go with basketball right you need to buy the basketball okay you might also need to buy a pump but let's just say we have the basketball just to start um you need appropriate clothes to play basketball and you have to have basketball shorts you know maybe a t-shirt or something you have to have those clothes luckily those things are pretty much easy to get because you should have those things in your closet anyway but then you need the appropriate shoes you know you can't play basketball in vans that well um unless you're okay with being uncomfortable but that's just the take and the give what you have to do in which case you can be an artist only using a pencil or a ballpoint pen you can do that but it's just not easy not to mention that if there's not access to like a local part or just a basketball hoop in general you got to buy your own hoop you don't need the hoop you can just practice your ball dribbling skills and then whenever you go to school you can shoot around there but again now we're trying to like get really really specific this is all bare bones every hobby you can think of requires some kind of investment up front and it's not like you have to buy all these supplies at one time save up your money you know put these things on your wish list your birthday list christmas list or whatever and slowly acquire the tools and supplies you need over time if you can't afford markers use color pencils and color pencils actually make you very good at blending because in order to be good at color pencils you have to be good at blending because they require a decent amount of blending in order to get the color right you'll use color pencils you'll color over a section and you'll see it doesn't look that good but there's a lot of room for creativity in color pencils because unlike markers color pencils are very forgiving when you use markers you're committing to whatever that color is and you can blend in the markers but you put down that blue on the sheet of paper, that blue is there. It's not going anywhere unless you cover it with a deeper, darker color. Versus colored pencils, the only way that color is not coming off or you can't fix it is if you really applied that colored pencil really hard on the sheet of paper. Thus, that means the benefit of using colored pencils is that if you really want to take your time, get things going nice and slow, if you really want to work on your blending, because when you work on blending with colored pencils, you work nice and soft and you build up your strength as you go. So you'll lightly apply a layer of color and then you'll deepen it up a little bit towards the center and then you'll deepen it up a little bit more and then you'll add another color that's similar you know you kind of get right next to that deep spot you'll lighten it up then you add a few more layers deepen it up a little bit you start to blend the two together and you really get good at blending and it's way harder to blend well with colored pencils than it is marker because it takes a lot more work but markers are trickier to blend than colored pencil per se if you understand what colors you're dealing with you can find a way to make a blend and like you can't just go from white to a black without having some gray in there so naturally there is some progression in there even if you can't afford color pencil I'm assuming everyone here has access to you know a regular pencil right 
the way I learned to blend, well it wasn't even blending, it was shading. I started off shading first by drawing a lot of flowers and then each one of the petals I would shade. But if the flower I made had 12 petals or whatever, each petal was a good opportunity to quickly learn how to shade because it wasn't that much space I was dealing with and it was quick. And I could very easily see, okay, this petal was good, this petal wasn't. And it was super fast, it was super quick, it didn't take too much time to figure out what was working and what wasn't. It allowed me to quickly execute on these things. But guys, if you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video, or if you have, you know, any things that you want advice on, by all means, let me know in the comment section down below. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, bounce past that bell, and get post notifications. Don't forget to visit kickstart.com for all your stick and sense needs. Guys, you already know that I'm uploading daily sneaker drawing videos. I'm going to include a playlist over at the end of this video that has all my how to draw videos, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yay!